uh, meanwhile, more attention as to how Tasfin Malik got into the United States. The, the wife of Sayed Farouk got it originally on one of these marriage visas. What that means is uh, you, you get these things granted within six months, according to the State Department, you have to get hitched, you have to get married, or you go right back to where you came from. Uh, she got a clean bill of health from Pakistan. In other words, they said there was nothing untoward or unusual in her background to prevent her getting one of these visas. But Indiana Republican Congressman Luke Messer says, obviously, in retrospect, they were wrong. And so were we. And he wants to crack down on these marriage visas. What would you do, Congressman? Well, Neil, the American people are waking up to what terrorists have known for some time, and that's that immigration and travel documents are weapons of terror, and if, if used inappropriately. I think we now need to have a top-down examination of our entire visa system. We need to re-examine old assumptions, and in light of the very new real terrorist threat, uh, we've got to look at what to re-examine. K-1 visas, which are the marriage visa you reference, are a part of that. All right, now, do, was it a K-1 visa? She was supposedly granted. How did it work? Because that in, involves more than the husband to be uh, saying this, this, this is fine, right? I mean, several people have to write off on it, right? Yeah, I mean, essentially, she came here through that visa because she was engaged to be married to her husband. There's a, a system of checks that are supposed to be on play, in place. Uh, clearly, they didn't set off any alarm bells. Their, their conduct prior to this terrible massacre did not set that off. I think what we've got to do via our, our visa waiver program, the Syrian refugee matter we were talking about just a week ago, and now the K-1 visas and elsewhere, what it really means is times have changed. And, and we need to, in light of this new terrorist threat, examine our entire system and, and look at what loopholes are there and what we could do better. I was glad on the K-1 visa to see the president last night calling for a review in his address to the nation. But and part of that review is you have to track people who say they'll be here for a few days or weeks uh, or months that they're, they're, they're back, uh, you know, showing up somewhere before beforehand, but a lot of these things get lost, don't they? Yeah, I mean, people need to be, we need to enforce them. Uh, we need to require you to leave when they expire. Of course, all of that requires manpower. It's a part of preserving our um, national security. This week, what you'll see on the House floor is legislation that deals with the visa waiver program. We have multiple dozen countries where folks can, that are citizens of those countries can come to America uh, without having a, a traditional visa. The legislation this week would fix that. I'm hoping we can look at K-1s as part of that legislative debate this week, and if not, we're going to need to deal with it quickly as we move into the new year. But real quickly, if, you, if, if she got into this country doing everything with a, pop, a proper paper record and a, and a write-off on the part of uh, authorities in Pakistan, where we had records, where we had a follow-through, imagine what happens with all these Syrian and other refugees who are coming here with no such background, with no such paperwork, with no such connections, just on a hunch and a prayer. Well, absolutely. I mean, there's no perfect way to deal with this, but we can be a lot smarter. The visa, visa waiver program, uh, the legislation we're doing this week, is a smart step. Last week's Syrian refugee legislation, which of course had a veto-proof majority attached to it, is another smart thing we can do. And yeah. dealing with these K-1 uh, marriage visas is important as well. Congressman, thank you. Thanks, Neil. Or in the meantime, we told you about how Obama.